That's the good thing about being Sylvester Stallone, that you sp- sp- speak so slow. Yeah, even when you're 80 and you talk like this and just used to it. That might be the worst impression of Sylvester Stallone history. <laughs> the slurred version, guys. Okay? It's the slurred version. There's two dudes who I think are wearing their old age well right now. And I think it's Mel Gibson and Kevin Costner. They both look like tough dudes, tough old dudes. They're old and gray, but they they're, they still play badasses pretty well in movies. And yeah. I think that's a gift. Like a lot of people, like um, Bruce Willis, he's still like trying to stay young, right? He keeps shaved. Yeah. I think they put a pretty good filter, a lot of makeup on him to make him, and they don't uh-huh. put him in, like he plays smaller roles now. And, uh, but I think when you can be Kevin Costner or Mel Gibson, like, fuck it. Look how old my fucking face is, dude. I'm a badass. And you still can carry the movie. That's something special. Because you can ride that shit uh, out. Yeah, you can. So it's like Clint Eastwood. Not so much. Not Clint no, Eastwood. He's, all the way into the streets, bro. Stallone like looks like he's melting. Around. Yeah. You know, Mel Gibson, though. I mean, that Santa Claus movie where he just murders everybody and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the fat that, granddad he would, bod, like, but he's still yeah. got kind of big arms. Like, you, like, yeah, he still looks like you, he could fucking knock you the fuck out if he hit you right. Oh yeah, yeah. I he like that a, look. A murder spree with a with a sledgehammer. Right. No problem. <laughs> I don't. That's what like, I looked at him and I thought. I know. I don't like watching Clint Eastwood now, like in the movie um, The Mule. Oh, mm-hmm. he's too old. I don't like yeah. it. Like he was my hero, and I gotta watch him be old and feeble like that. Oh, I don't like it. That's the good thing about being Sylvester Stallone that you sp- sp- speak so slow. <laughs> yeah, even when you're eighty and you talk like this and just used to it. That might be the worst impression of Sylvester Stallone history, <laughs> but it was the slurred version, guys. Okay, it's the slurred version. That last movie, you know, hey, could you could you try to human hey. traffic my 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 niece. And he just goes there, yeah. and fucks I, people up. I, I human trafficking my niece. <laughs> yeah, if I, I would, if it already didn't happen, even though this plot happened in a similar movie, I would say, I don't know who you are, but I will find you, <laughs> and I will kill you. There's <laughs> something weird Maybe. about like you looking that old, like you're melting, but then also look like you can still bench press 380 pounds. Like there's something weird with that, you know? This is why 72 yeah. years old or something. Back it down, just I don't know, one way uh, or the other. Yeah. That you know what's funny is I also read um I also read a made up statistic that Sylvester Stallone, if you calculate the amount of lines times the amount of movies the number will be lower than anybody else on how many words were actually said. Oh, he may, he is in his career. He has made more money in Hollywood per word than any other actor in Hollywood history in movie making history. history. Yeah. I think at first blood, he said like, see, he had like one monologue after he, the Colonel finally caught him down oh, in yeah. the town. You know, he drew first blood, not me. I was like half of his, half the script. It was half of his part of the script. The, it was only I just that. Just want to get some lunch. They're all dead, sir. Not Cleveland. He <laughs> made it out. Cancer ate him to the bone. Nom killed him. Never even knew it. Boom. He's done for the. Tell you, that's a wrap for Stallone this week. <laughs> He'll be in his trailer. <laughs> yeah. I love that, bro. That is uh, so funny. Ro- Rambo, uh, Rocky, knows it Rambo 5? That one that threw me for a loop and it was just like absolutely gory. Yes, where he's just like in uh, nowhere. He's in Vietnam. He's flying. Yes. And guts. I was like, Jesus, this is a rough one. He gets on that 50 cal and it's just like people are just yeah. blowing up in pieces <laughs> as he hits them. <laughs> and then he. You just then, see like guts flying and yeah. skulls. And at the end, he like eviscerates that dude. He stabs him with his knife and he runs it all the way across his belly and his guts just pour out. Like, I was like, what the fuck? They really amped up this yeah. Rambo shit. Yeah, they did because that was a, a shocker. Like people died a lot pre- previously, but you didn't see the inside of the bodies as much, or the or the contact, the head splitting in half, or the bullets exploding people's necks. Exactly. I mean, Jesus Christ! I don't know what what got into him if he was just like, hey, um, I just like he he went to some 
movie seminar somewhere and you know they have little booths where they show off new movie technology and they're like oh here's here's our new um exploding body um sequences we can do and he's like oh yeah what the end of my movie you you come come work for me on rambo five like fucking we (laughs) i don't know what (laughs) happens to people but i guess you probably go through phases where you're like i want to try this new shit like i I see movies where, you know, people are exploding the little pieces. Like, I've never done that in my movie. I should try to make a movie that's nothing but that. You know? My favorite name drop story to do with Sylvester Stallone is my really good friend, James. Mm-hmm. He's a computer wizard, right? All things Mac, all things PC, all things streaming, all things coding, graphic, websites, even hardware. He'll fix it all, right? Like, he's just the guy. And he he was he used to be, before he moved and went, got a job at Microsoft and now another company, but he used to be the freelance uh, tech guy for A-list Hollywood. Oh shit! So he had you know Steve Carell, you know uh, shares people like uh, fucking uh, everybody. Like even um, he had Stallone, right? And so and, and a lot of times people hire people just for the easiest shit. Like he right. goes, man, I feel like some days he would feel bad because he'd be like. Bro, all I had to do was go over there to reset the router. They just didn't figure it. I, 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 I had because he had like a base rate of like one hundred fifty dollars hours just to show up. Sure, yeah, or some wild shit like that, like three hundred. I don't know what it was, but, but you know, he can't control what they're calling you over for. Right. Sometimes he'd have to go for some a list celebrity, go and buy him new computers, and and then switch over all the information for him. Right, yeah. and then give them their hand them their new ones and wipe the old ones. So like that's what he would do for all these amongst a million other things. You know what I so never thought about to too. You you really right. like if you're super famous, you need a guy like that because like people probably all constantly try to hack you because if they can get if mm-hmm. like family photos on the beach or something, those are worth fucking big money to TMZ. You know, so yeah. he he yeah. But then that's funny that he just have bullshit stuff too like. Um, yeah, I can't, uh, my, my computer won't work. Oh, well here, you have to hit the power button and then yeah, oh, yeah. here's, here's $300. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude. For, for like a 40 minutes, you know, for just getting there and back yeah. and you just go there, turn on a lap, laptop and turn off. But he used to do stuff for Stallone and, uh, he ended up one day they, he started talking and they're hanging out and, and Stallone's like, bro, uh, they start talking about Creed two. Bust out the script and they're, they're they're working back and forth through parts of Creed two before it was you know before it was made and all that was really be the, the script was still being written and uh, he ended up going come on what can I give you like he had this cool souvenir closet of just stuff he gives people like autographed gloves and things like that yeah so he'd come back and he had this like autumn awesome like r- like Rocky gloves autographed by Stallone after going to transfer over his ipod library to another ipod or some shit they end up wow. working on creed 2 that's yeah, insane that's what you ever told me holy shit can you imagine and steve Car- and steve carell's the only guy that the only a-list superstar that answers his own door <laughs> oh <laughs> really yeah because a lot of times the people aren't even there right like it's yeah. assistance he's dealing with and uh he goes like nah man i went to steve carell's house and he opened the door hey come on in this is my nice. family nice <laughs> 